This episode on KL Enforcers. Pak Wagi, CKJ dapat di Banting. Eh? Dapat satu panggilan bahawa ada satu kejadian kapal terbalik di Banting. Okay. 55 of them were safe and then uh, 42 still missing. Satu lagi kes, bot pancung telah terbalik. Okay, apa, apa nak sekarang ni? Okay, kita sekarang nak pergi ke arah lokasi kejadian. Kapal karam. Get ready to receive one of the body. It is a typical Wednesday morning for the Royal Malaysian Police Forensics Unit at their headquarters. Assalamualaikum. The team is trying to schedule the duty roster for the coming week. Perfect team, five people. Include your photo. Ranking Officer Assistant Superintendent Hafizul examines the roster for the day. Buat dia adalah catatan pergerakan pegawai dan anggota CSI yang amat malfungsi ke mana. Catatan-catatan kita akan buat untuk uh, sekali limbah kita tengok kita tahu pergerakan pegawai dan anggota. Kalau ada kes kita akan isi perut dulu sikit. Kalau macam sampai tengah hari kan kita terima kes maybe dalam sebelum kita makan. Kita minum dulu, and then kita pergi tempat kejadian dulu lah. Maybe lepas, uh, lepas tu kita dah hati dah senang, kerja dah selesai, dia baru kita ada. Mungkin ada selera sikit lah nak makan. It is 11.35 in the morning. So far, no cases have been reported and it looks to be a slow day for the team. But that quickly changes. Selamat pagi, CKJ. SM Tolong Gaman Tekap, Bisa Bandu. Eleven hours ago, an illegal ferry carrying immigrants sank off the coast of Banting, 70 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur. 97 lives are at stake. Search and rescue operations are underway. The forensics unit is called to assist the search and rescue task force. Ya, uh, saya terima satu panggilan telefon daripada DSP Minas. Kan? Dia dapat satu panggilan bahawa ada satu kejadian kapal terbalik lah, di Banting. Dan dia memerlukan kita uh, menyediakan satu tim CSI. Juru foto kita akan uh, panggil. Cik, tolong, Cik Roslan tolong panggil juru foto lagi. And then uh, nanti kita dah prepare, dah get ready dan kita maklum balik pada Tuan Juknes. The police forensics team is trained to deploy within 15 minutes. They make a final check of their equipment before they leave. Okay. As the case involves search and rescue out at sea, the scuba team has also been put on standby. As the team prepares, Inspector Yam, the team leader for the day, rushes back from police duties to assist. <laughs> Apa peralatan yang uh, nak digunakan kita dah sembah dalam kedai kita. Yam looks through the official report of the incident. The case appears to be more serious than he thought. So far, uh, from the latest info we have, uh, 55 of them were safe and then uh, another 42 still missing. Or our role uh, in uh, crime scene investigation. Uh, we're going to assist them uh, in body identification. Basically, we are waiting for the instruction. The forensics team does not have to wait for long before they receive the green light to mobilize. They're heading to the coast, where they will join up with a multi-agency task force engaged in search and rescue operations. The incident soon makes headlines on national news. 
susulan sebuah tongkang membawa 97 orang karam di perairan di barat Malaysia dekat Banting menurut agensi penguatkuasaan maritim Malaysia sehingga sekitar pukul 10.30 pagi tadi 61 penumpang masih hilang laporan awal yang kami terima adalah pasukan bomba ketika ini sedang memantau pesisir pantai kita mengatur gerakkan aset-aset agensi penguatkuasaan maritim untuk melaksanakan operasi mencari dan menyelamat maritim di lokasi yang dikenal pasti. Off the coast of Banting, where the incident occurred, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency has already deployed its assets. Lieutenant Faisal is one of the agency's search and rescue officers. He and his team have just been deployed from the nearest base. Okay, kita sekarang nak pergi ke arah lokasi kejadian. Lokasi kejadian kapal karam. In search and rescue operations, time is of the essence. Every passing minute could be the difference between life and death. And it has already been 13 hours since the incident. With lives at stake, the team travels as fast as possible to the search area. Apa nak sekarang ni? When they arrive, they scan the waters meticulously. Even after 30 minutes of searching, they find no survivors. Soon, another search boat six nautical miles away reports the sighting of bodies floating in the water. It is already too late for some of the victims. 13 hours ago, a ship carrying illegal immigrants sank off the coast of Banting, 70 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur. 97 lives are at stake. Four government agencies have been deployed for search and rescue operations including the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency. Okay, kita sekarang nak pergi ke arah lokasi kejadian. Lokasi kejadian kapal karam. Lieutenant Faisal is one of the maritime enforcement officers involved in search and rescue operations. He and his team have just received news of bodies being sighted in the waters. As their speedboat is too small to transport bodies, the officers radio the nearest patrol ship for assistance. The shifting currents have caused the bodies to drift far from the incident location, complicating recovery efforts. The authorities scour the seas from morning to night. At the end of the day, 20 victims are still missing. It is now 21 hours since the tragedy struck. The clock is ticking for those still lost at sea. Lieutenant Faisal leads his team out again, hoping to recover more survivors. Mai kilo di sini, Papa dua tiga. Ujian pendengaran, ujian pendengaran. His team heads once more to the incident area. Tapi dah kita dah semakin mampir ya, kawasan kejadian. So kita ibu kita nak alert kapal-kapal lain yang kahiran kita. Dan mungkin juga mangsa-mangsa yang mungkin terselamat, mungkin dia dengar kita, mungkin dia akan buat sebarang tindakan. But when the team arrives, they have a problem. Kapal karam berada di depan kita ni. Kita tak boleh nak dekat sangat sebab apa air tanpa setek, dia punya depth kat situ lebih kurang 2 meter. The team circles around the shallow area, keeping a lookout for survivors. However, the pitch dark conditions make search efforts difficult. Hujan anggota kat sini dia menggunakan segala deria, mata dan juga telinga 
untuk melihat dan mendengar mungkin ada bunyian-bunyian yang ganjil. The elements are against them. Rough waters and darkness impede the search. Frustration starts to creep in. After four hours at sea, they find no survivors and are forced to return to base. Malah kita tidak menyebabkan apa-apa sebabkan keadaan cuaca yang makin gelap dan laut pun yang tak apa elok. Kita akan menyambungkan operasi SAR kita pada esok hari. The next morning, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency calls for a press conference. The press are told of a shocking development. Untuk maklumat tuan-tuan juga, kami baru dapat mengesan dan menerima panggilan berkaitan dengan satu lagi kes bot pancung telah terbalik di kawasan Api Gila. This second tragedy adds more pressure on the rescuers. Total semua sekali melibatkan 124 orang yang terlibat dalam kes. Yes, dua kes bot karam. The agency responds by deploying more assets. Lieutenant Faisal and his team rejoin rescue operations after the unsuccessful efforts of the previous day. Okay, pada hari ini kita akan terus menyambung kita punya search and rescue kita ke arah lokasi yang lebih lebih besar dengan aset yang lebih banyak. In total, six speedboats, three patrol vessels, and a helicopter are deployed. Okay, yang saya dipahamkan kehan baru yang berlaku adalah uh, satu buat mancung. Tahu mancung penumpang lebih kurang 25 orang. Dia telah karam buang lapan batu nautika daripada pantai Morin. Just as Lieutenant Faisal's team is about to begin search efforts, they receive good news from their colleagues at sea. Kita telah terima satu berita yang ada seorang cedera. Cedera dia telah selamatkan oleh kapal dagang. Helikopter itu memberi bantuan awal dan segera. Ke arah, ke, kepada mangsa yang cedera tu dan mengambil mengambil anggota yang cedera tu ke helikopter dan bawa terus direct ke hospital. Meanwhile, four different government agencies have set up an operations base at Kampong Kalanang, a small fishing village near Ground Zero. The local press have also converged here to cover the unfolding crisis. Pihak berkuasa, terutama sekali polis marine dan juga APMM akan meningkatkan uh, aset dan juga keanggotaan di sekitar perairan berkenaan. Inspector Yam from the Royal Malaysian Police Forensics Unit is on standby to receive the recovered bodies. So as you can see, uh, now we are at uh, Jati Kampung uh, Kelanang. We have all other elements to assist us. For the search and rescue team, they are still searching for the uh, survivor. And while we are waiting here for if there's any uh, dead body found, so we're going to process the dead body here over the jetty there. We have to uh, stand by 24 hours, on duty 24 hours here. The authorities are working in difficult conditions. They are facing temperatures up to 38 degrees Celsius and the extreme humidity of the coastal areas. Amidst the bustle, a family arrives to search for a missing relative. A police officer calls the hospital to cross-check the victim's name with the list of survivors. There is no match. As the hours pass, dead bodies start to arrive. Get ready to receive one of the body. It is now 26 hours since the boat sank. 
At the search and rescue operations base, dead bodies have started to arrive. Get ready to receive one of the body. The hot and humid conditions have accelerated decomposition. The stench of death permeates the air. Yes, lots of water, lots of water. Pull, pull, pull. Ah, okay. Okay, just now they uh, just sent. Uh, they just found uh, one body out there, so they just sent the body here. Uh, it's a male, and uh, just do some uh, inspection of the body. Yeah, we just send it to the hospital for further inspection. Within an hour, a second body is brought in. The situation is grim. The sight of decaying bodies is unnerving to many. But forensics personnel have to remain professional. Pada saya biasa saja. Sudah biasa dengan mayat-mayat. Saya kena terima sebab ini tanggungjawab yang harus saya lakukan. But there is respite for the weary. A flurry of activity alerts the forensics team to some good news. Jadi survivor. Huh? Jadi survivor. Helikopter yang kemudian ada satu survivor. Oh, okay. Juga dalam dalam dalam. In the dalam bom ada itu. If there's survivor, it's a good news. Yeah, good news. It's always better than somebody's dying. Like uh, those who that never been found. We hope we hope that they survive. Uh, we hope they survive. Meanwhile, back at sea, more survivors have been rescued by the Maritime Enforcement Agency. Lieutenant Faisal's team is ordered to return to Port Klang to assist. Kita sekarang masuk kejap ke Kelang ni, JT Kelang ni. So sambil menunggu arahan selanjutnya daripada pihak atasan. So sekarang ni juga kita menunggu itu 14 survival daripada pengalang satu. Kita jumpa 14 orang tu di area kapal dagang. Mereka mengambil seorang tu daripada kapal dagang. Kapal dagang telah selamatkan mereka dan just ambil. Rasa saya pada masa ini penat bercampur gembira sebab kita at least kita ada penemuan pada hari ini so kesemua mereka masih hidup. Jezo. Berapa orang? 14. 14. Dewasa 13. 13. Perempuan dewasa seorang. 14 orang. 14 orang. The survivors have been floating at sea for over 12 hours. They recount their terrifying ordeal. Saya dipahamkan mereka telah berpaut pada tong plastik dan mereka telah berada dalam air sangat lama juga lah. Dengan masa itu pula keadaan yang trauma dengan minyak petro yang bertaburan di atas laut. Semua tujuh belas. Yang ini semua empat belas. Tiga belas lelaki, seorang perempuan. Tiga orang lagi naik heli. Naik heli. Untuk empat lagi. Ini ini daripada kes kapal karam yang kedua. Tu. Sebab ada anggota yang sakit. Ada anggota yang kurang sihat. So, mungkin kami akan beri rawatan awal dulu kepada mereka. Itu kami akan bawa mereka ke hospital. Seterusnya membuat sehatan selanjutnya. Speaking to one of the survivors, Lieutenant Faisal learns of how the boat sank. Saya tanya dia, macam mana betul? Kapal tu beli karam. Tu dia bagi tahu saya, kapal tu karam sebabkan oleh lebihan muatan. Barang-barang yang dibawa itu pun banyak dan masa itu cuaca pun teruk ah. So that's why kapal tu dah tak mampu dan menyebabkan ramai yang jatuh laut. 
Saya dipahamkan dengan beg-beg yang kita jumpa. Eh. Mungkin mereka ingin balik ke kampung asal mereka tu, Indonesia. The victims are believed to be illegal immigrants returning to their home country for the Muslim festival of Eid al-Fitri. This tragedy has dashed their hopes of seeing their families. Recovering these survivors has raised hopes. But there is still work to be done. Walaupun penat, saya rasa sangat gembira kerana kita walaupun penat lelah kita menyayangi hasil. Hasil yang kita patut bangga kerana itu. So saya berharap search and rescue ini dapat diteruskan sehingga ke semua bangsa dijumpai. Next episode on KLN Forces. The victim was shot when he saw us near the LRT station. Usually we look for bullet casing if there is any and blood stains. Kalau berdasarkan pembahasan sekarang ni kita syakir bot tersebut dah buat betul dia sangat tercari lah. Kita katakan bubur yang melakukan kesalahan biasa area. Area di sini lah. Hey! 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 Hey!